Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, this is going to be a slightly longer intro than usual, so feel free to use the new chapters and skip ahead to the solving of the puzzle, which is woo, which is a German whispers and thermo puzzle, but with white dots that represent a value to be determined as the difference between two cells, just in case you're jumping ahead. Now, um, I had filmed another video for today. I'm postponing that uh, probably till Monday for a few reasons. <laughs> One of them is um, because it replicates, no, well it it's a uh, it's a puzzle with a very with a similar rule set to one that I now know Simon is doing today um, or has done today so um, probably best to space them out I also wanted to mention a couple of other things um, and one of those is that on my video yesterday as several people pointed out um, I did make an error in assumption at one point. I'm sorry about that. It just happens because of being human and all that. Um, I do want to thank a, a viewer called Omri Orgad who has po posted both for that video and for another one recently um, a very quick and uh, and non-condemnatory explanation of how you can get to that point in the solve rather quickly um, without making a false assumption. So thank you very much, Omri. I really appreciate the service you're doing for my videos. Let's hope you don't have to do it again today. Now, um, I don't know if Simon has read this letter, but we got an absolutely gorgeous email from Sam who wanted to offer an overdue letter of thanks. Um, having discovered our channel over a year ago and having not missed a video or puzzle since. Um, he signed up for the Patreon within a week or two and it's the single greatest use of $3 he can think of. He says, I've lost a lot this past year and the fact that Simon and Mark have reliably stayed with me every single day has worked wonders for my mental health. He's grateful for being able to harness his mathematical skills and growing his Sudoku aptitude. And it's his birthday and he says, while I fully expect it to be a sad, lonely day, I can rest a little easier knowing I can look forward to a pair of videos from CTC. Um, and I'm sure it won't be a sad, lonely day, Sam. I know that you have people who love you, and even if you don't, Simon and I do. But we're really grateful for the email. It's, uh, it's a tonic to us when people say that sort of thing. And that brings me on to where I was yesterday and why I wasn't sure I would be up to recording a video today. Um, I was at a, a funeral, sadly, of a former work colleague um, with, with and the day was, was as lovely as it can be, um, with a lot of Irish present. Uh, you may guess the wake turned into quite, quite the celebration as is appropriate. And, uh, yeah, my my friend Reg will be much missed um, by all of us, but it was good to catch up with those people I got to see again, including one who has become a gas addict since the last time I met him, um, and now watches our videos every day, plays all of the gas puzzles, has bought all the gas apps, and can't wait for more. And uh, that's brilliant. I'm so... It makes me very nervous when somebody I know in real life is a follower of the channel. That's just a weird overlap to me. Simon takes that in his stride, but to me it feels a very odd thing. But nonetheless, it's delightful. And uh, it, was, it was great to see him and many other people there yesterday. Um, and yeah, as I say, it went okay. Um, now, this puzzle that I'm going to do today is by Heliopolis. Um, I think this was actually not Sam's own puzzle but a recommendation that he sent us uh, because Heliopolis wrote to us in January and has a different name. So pretty sure he's not Sam. Um, but this puzzle looks very interesting anyway. And you can see probably how, you know, it, it's an interesting idea and you can see why Sam's recommended it. So the rules, uh, have I finished everything? No, I haven't at all, of course. We've still got the incredible Sudoku hunt, um, the Jewels of Osiris on Patreon. So for the best $3 you can ever spend, 
join us on Patreon, have a go at Demono's incredible novella stroke treasure hunt, The Jewels of Osiris, and enter the competition. Still a week left. Um, and I think you will enjoy it. I'm certain you will. Now, what else have we got going on? Well, I mean, there's the apps, as mentioned, and uh, not just gas, but all the others. And you can look at the catalogue of our videos or try our merchandise or Sven Sudoku Pad. Now, yes, 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 yes. Sven Sudoku Pad reminds me that um, that walk in the mist puzzle that Simon did yesterday, where he's planning, we're planning to keep updating the um, puzzle, the video title for the number of people who've solved that puzzle. And it has gone past 10,000 people. When I saw, you know, he was saying, will it get to 10,000 or 100,000? I was thinking, he's mad. Why would that many people solve a puzzle on Logic Masters Germany? I hadn't realized at that time that we, that Sven has implemented this incredible ability for us to know how many people have solved a puzzle in our software. Um, and that is running, as I say, I think it's gone over 10,000 now. It's fantastic. So well done to those people who've solved it. It's an elegant fog of war puzzle, but not too difficult. Uh, so well worth a try. Now, this one is called Aquatic Marmalade by Heliopolis. And uh, the rules are these. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we're going to be putting one to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box. That's normal Sudoku rules. Digits increase along thermometers from the bulb. We've only got two of those. Adjacent digits along a green line have to differ in value by at least five. So those two digits could be a one six pair or a one nine pair, but not a two six pair. Now here comes the really unusual rule. Cells joined by a white dot differ by the same value. The solver must determine the value. Not all possible dots are given. So we're going to have to work out. It's not necessarily, it could be, a difference of one this time. It's a difference of something that's always consistent. And we're going to have to work it out. So do give it a try on the first link under the video, which I've just set up. So I'm assuming that this doesn't come up with a number of solutions at the end that can be possibly more than one. But I don't know how that works. Anyway, um, I am going to give it a try now and... Uh, restart my clock. Maybe this restart. No, that couldn't count as someone solving it. Anyway, let's get cracking. So we have got a long green line here. That seems like a place to start to me. Okay, I get to trot out my three classic German whisper observations. One of those is that five can never be on a green line because there is no Sudoku digit that can be next to it on a green line. The second is that we must alternate between high and low digits on such a green line because five's not in, all the digits are either higher or lower than five and you can't have two of those of the same polarity next to each other. And the third is that four and six are hard to place on these lines because their neighbours mustn't see each other. You couldn't put a four here, for instance, or both of those would be nine. Four and six only have one neighbor each. So how can we use that and this coloring now to determine anything on this line? Can we? Am I just missing this? It doesn't seem obvious to me. We've got three purples and three greens in the row, in row seven, which seems to be the key row. But each of them could sustain one of these four or six digits. That could be a six with a one there. That could be a four with a nine there. So actually that even could be, both of those could be a four or a six. So, oh, weirdly actually, only those three digits on the line can't be four or six. So that four or six business is not very helpful here. I'm not sure what is helpful, actually. This doesn't, this hasn't panned out like I was hoping with this line. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't think it's enough information. I think we might have to think about the white dots instead. Okay. Um, oh, we've got a white dot on the green line. Ah, oh, that's huge. That is huge. 
course. The difference clearly is at least five. How did I not see that? That's vital. Because big differences are much harder to sustain in a puzzle like this than small differences. Um, the small differences, you could not... You could get a lot of small differences. You could get four white dots in a box if the difference was one. In fact, you could get them in separate dominoes if the difference was one, maybe even if it was two. But once you get up to five or more, there are limited possible ways of doing this. So, um, I see that we have three dots in some boxes. Are there any with four? There are no sequences of dots. Right, we know the difference is at least five. That is huge, I think. But I need to work out how it's huge. It can't be eight. Let's start with that. It's five, the difference is five, six, seven, or eight. Let's just stick that as an aid memoir here. It can't be eight because every pair would have to be a one nine pair. So forget that. It can't be seven because every pair would be a two nine or a one eight pair. And you could have two of those in a box, but you couldn't have a third. So I think the question is, can it possibly be six or can we rule that out? Now, if it was six, these cells in this box would be three, nine, two, eight, and one, seven. And the same would be true for these six cells. And the remaining ones in the box would be four, five, and six specifically. Now, that does look quite possible on this thermo. Ah, oh, maybe the point... Okay, I don't think I can work that out from just eliminating six. But maybe I can do something with high and low on this, th on this thermo, which seems quite detached. Or maybe on this one. Right, okay, what I'm now going to think about is, even with a difference of five, it's not just for a dot on a green line, but the colours, the, the height and lowness... Yeah, whatever the difference is, you can't have five on a white dot. Right, that's an interesting deduction that I hadn't made. So five in this puzzle can neither be on a white dot nor a green line. And I think I might be spotting a swordfish. That's an unusual oh, aquatic marmalade. I was just about to say it's an unusual aquatic sighting. And that reminded me of the title of the puzzle. Um, now, in... Oh, no, it's not true. Oh, bother. Well, that puzzle title is making me think I should be looking for a swordfish. So these are the only cells in column three where a five can be. In column six, I've got to find a bunch of columns. I thought we may be on a, a jellyfish, something bigger than a swordfish. I don't even know the terms. I mean, I, I'm a hopeless Sudoku coach because I don't know the actual terms. Those are the... Oh, gosh. Okay, I am like, let's forget this for a moment. I'm taking out that colouring. I'm going to... Taking out that... It's five or six, the difference. I'm now just going to colour the cells where fives can be and see what I can notice from those. Five cannot touch a white dot or a green line. So its options are a bit limited in this puzzle, and I just want to see how limited they are. I want to deduce something. I don't know if this is going to let me deduce anything. I reckon those are the cells that could have a five based on this discovered rule. They're, they're too many. They're too many to be useful. Or are they? Is there a swordfish? Oh, that one as well. Yeah, no, come on. Surely row one, row seven. Right. Row one. Here we go. Row one, row four, row seven and row nine. In those rows, five can only appear in one of these yellow cells. And that is going to take up all the fives in those rows. 
five is going to appear in one of those cells in each of those rows. Therefore, for each of those four columns that we've isolated, five must appear in those cells. So I'm going to flash those purple and then take out other yellow cells in the same columns. There's not that many of them, but there's a few. Now, fives have to appear four times in the purple cells. And then, well, there's one more in row eight somewhere there. One more in row six somewhere in those three columns. So that's going to be two more of the fives. We're up to six now. And that's like another sort of semi-X wing because one of these two must have a five in. Now that one can't. And in row five, there's only one cell left that can have a five. And there it is. Wow, this is much more complex than I was expecting. I suppose the clue was in the title of the puzzle. I didn't really spot it. Um, so we've got one five there, two in those cells. There must be one in this pair. And that means this one, because column eight needs a five somewhere, that means this one isn't a five in the corner. Still don't know the difference. Um... So, if we had one there, I don't know. Okay, there's no five in those. That's obvious now. Um, hmm, that hasn't quite done it. I thought this was going to crack it open. It doesn't. Right. Let's go back to the high-low marking now. Let's make that purple. Oh, bother. Okay, let's do high-low marking in green and red. Colours that I hope to turn into orange for high and blue for low. So this cell, tut oh no, it's five away. Yes, this must be the other polarity. The, wh the white dots... They're either a difference of five or six, but they certainly act as polarity changers now. And that might get interesting. Or it might not. Yeah, the white dots act as polarity changers. So, in this box, there's one polarity pair there, another one there, another one there. Um, these three cells must be of two different parities and five. So one of those two is a five, the other one is a high digit. Is that interesting? Not very. Oh, I should be able to find a way to apply this polarity changing thing. Oh, okay. Effectively, these are all joined up. Oh, look, they're joined up with these. Oh, my goodness, there's a whole... Okay, let us forget. <laughs> I'm going to uncolor this line yet again. And I'm going to color an enormous nexus of connected items up here. Ooh, including that cell. Right, let's go green and red up here. I'll use the other shade of green. And we, oh, we also, yes, we come over to this one as well. We alternate everywhere up here. So if I've got this right, and there is every chance I haven't, green is one polarity, high, no, not there, high or low, and red is the other. I'm sorry if this is confusing you, but it seems to be the way through the puzzle. Um, now, which of these, maybe I need to ask which of these can be fours and sixes. Is that going to be relevant? 
Oh no, I was going to ask, does this green have to be high? The only way it can be low is if this goes one, two, three, four. And that's not possible because we need another low digit on this pair. Right. So green is high. So I can make green blue now. I can make red or... No, green is high. That's orange for me. Sorry. I can make red blue. So these are low. Blue is low. Orange is high. Now, which ones can't be fives themselves? Which one? No, which ones can't be fours and sixes? Because there's a few more on this line than there were on the bottom line. That can't be a four or six because its neighbours see each other. And that one. And that one. And that one. And it's not so many. It's not so many as I'd like. Those two can't be as well. So maybe it's the fact that these can't be fours and sixes. I don't think that's helpful at the moment. If five is the difference on the white dot, any of these can be. It's, it's not really doing anything. Um, Right, I do not know quite what to be doing next. Can I link up these orange and blues with this line? I don't think I can. No, I don't think there's any way to link from the top to the bottom like that. This is a run of three. In the, the, the alternating between high and low. Oh, maybe I can use this. Now, for this to be low, it would be three or four. You would ha ah, that's impossible. Because these, if this was low, these would both be low, and that's three lows in the box. There's a fourth one there that I've already made blue, and you'd suddenly need an extra fifth impossible low for that pair. So this is not low, it's also not five, so it's high. And that alternates onto this line. So now we've got onto this bottom line. And now I can colour it high and low and not just red and green or something like that. Right. That is also connected. Blue. This is connected orange. I almost want to get rid of the yellows. I tell you what. Maybe what I'll do is mark the yellows with a five in the corner and then get rid of the yellow colouring. That's what I shall do, because it's kind of getting in the way. But I've highlighted the place where fives can be, and the purples still represent that original. Is it a jellyfish? I think it's a jellyfish when you get to four rows and columns. And apologies if I've got that wrong. Um, now, this isn't the highest digit because that is higher. So that's also high, and that's low. Now, in this column, that's a domino of high-low, so that's a domino of high-low. We haven't got up to a count of four highs or four lows in here. I don't think so. Um, okay, let's think about this number. It's six, seven, or eight. That's just facts. This one is five or six away from that. So it's somewhere between one, two, and three. It can't be four. That's totally uninteresting because that was always one, two, or three. This is the same number as that one. Do I have to individually colour cells? I didn't think this was going to be this complicated, but it really is. This is seven, eight or nine. Now that is five or six away from this, but that doesn't actually stop it being any of the low digits at all. Oh, 
maybe there really is still a way of ruling out six as the white dot difference. One, two, three, seven, eight, nine. These would be four, five, six. These would be four, five, six. What does that do, if anything? It makes that definitely low. I don't think that's going to butter any parsnips, unfortunately. Two. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on in this puzzle. Those two given digits, they're just mocking me, doing nothing. Um, or are they doing something? If six was the difference, these would have to be an eight, seven, two, and one. doesn't help. Um, in this column, no, four is not really relevant to that because uh, it just couldn't even be on a six dot anyway. So, oh bother. Was I meant to be able to finish off the fives at the beginning? I don't think so. There's one there, there's one there, there's one in one of those two. There's definitely one here now. If that's a five, that's high. Is it this column? I've got three blues and three oranges already. And this cell is seeing three blues and three oranges horizontally and three blues and three oranges vertically. But what I want is for it to be seeing a fourth somewhere. Hmm. I don't know. What is it? Okay, these can't all be high. Because then this would need a high digit. So that one's definitely low. So that is high. Yeah, maybe I need to use the thermos a bit more. If these were all high, these would all be low. And that does look possible. We'll give an interesting result here because that would be high and that would be high and that would now be the fourth high in row six. But it's not impossible. Um, it would also mean we'd got the four highs in this box. Is it about fours and sixes? It just doesn't feel like they're really numbers communicating between the parts of the grid with each other to me. See, that could be a six. Even if that couldn't and that couldn't. No, this couldn't actually. Ah, okay. Well, there's interesting. That is a seven, eight, nine triple in the column. Hadn't seen that before. So the numbers that or the, the cells that aren't blue are either low or five. This one isn't five. Oh no, it could be six. Sorry, they're either low, five or six. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, it's not what I wanted to know. Seven, eight, nine, triple. Now, two of those are exhibiting this difference, whatever it is. But that difference is not occurring here. These don't form a chain with the white dots. No, they don't, because these differences could be maximal. Oh, I don't see what to do. If this is very obvious to you, I can only say sorry. Um, But maybe I need to still be looking for for seven, eight, nine sets or something. That, for instance, sees two blues. So that is seven, eight or nine. That one as well. Those two can't be the same. Um, 
but I there aren't many there aren't many cells that have to be seven eight or nine I think I may have highlighted the only ones I can see okay let's do it with blues that needs to be one two or three this one sees two digits so that couldn't be a four uh, this one as well and not that one so no it's just not as conclusive for blues I suppose this one needs to be one, two, or three because it can see an actual four. Now ah, it's in column three again. So we've got one more from one, two, and three. And then we've got four, five, and six to fit in. Is it this cell I should be worrying about that cannot be a five? Oh, I've only got no, I haven't only got one place for five in column one. Sorry, I've got I've got those as well. Yes, it's not just purples. I mean No, it is just purples. You this is why I don't know how to operate jellyfishes. Um because there is only one purple cell in column one, and the fives have to be in purple in rows one, four, seven, and nine, columns one, three, six, and nine. So that is the only place for a five in column one. That is the right thing to think. This cannot be a five. The only, no, the only, I was gonna say the only purple for five in column, in box eight is here, but that's not relevant. This now is not a five, though, because it's in the same box. So the only purple five in column three is up at the top, and that is a five, and this isn't. And now we've got an X-wing. We've reduced our jellyfish to an X-wing. Oh, we are going to be putting in a five in these cells as well. Yes, they remain another X-wing. It's going to be a five. Okay, has this helped at all in column three? My favourite little column, no. Uh, or has it? We need to put in six in one of those two cells. What does that mean? These two are the same, aren't they? Yeah, okay, so they can't be six now. That's slightly interesting. Six is in one of those two cells. And if you were to put six in both of those, it couldn't be. Right, so then not six, that's not seven, it's got bigger. Ooh, I was gonna say that limits this, and it does a bit, but not in the way I want it. It takes one away as a possibility. That's now two, three, or four, given our white dot difference of five or six. Now this digit is now here, so that's seven or eight. Um, that has got a difference on this line. This is just an ordinary German whispers now. They can't be four, so they're from one, two, or three. No, oh, I mean, it's tiny bits of progress all the time, but it doesn't yield any complete conclusions. Yeah, this is one of those puzzles I'm really just not grasping how it works. <laughs> um, this one is definitely coloured, but it could be anything blue or six. Nah. I was about to say, if that's not six, six must be here. That's not a conclusion I can reach at all. It's for any number of reasons. That would be balmy. Now, there is a low digit here. It could be four if it was in that cell. Then this would be a nine. This would be a seven, eight pair.
I'm becoming more and more sure that the difference on the white dot is five, but I haven't got any concrete proof of this. And it's, it's frustrating because I kind of, if I could do that, we could really make some progress, I think. Um, at least I got somewhere with the jellyfish in the end, even though that was something I should have obviously seen before. Um, cha-cha, come on, Mark. What is going on? Is that really potentially a four? The only way that's a four is if there is a white... A white dot equals five rule. And they would be four, nine. This would be a seven, eight pair. Oh, there's no relationship between those two cells. I mean, that's really annoying. That could be a seven, three pair. And that would just really look weird to me just because they're next to each other in a whispers puzzle. Oh, what am I looking for now? That pair I haven't labelled at all, but I don't think I can. That digit. Was I meant to chase that round the grid? Doubt it very much, but let's just think about that. I don't see what good that does. One of these two has to be nine. That's definitely true in the column. But again, I suppose both of them offer up more flexibility if they're nine. So maybe the way to think about that is that whichever one is nine, the other one is eight or seven. If that was seven, this is a one-two pair. Oh, that gets more interesting. This would be eight because of seven being in the box. Oh, is there some connection between these because of the thermo... There is. Those all have to be different. That's so weird. Why couldn't I see that? I don't know if it helps, but they all have to be different. It's like a knight's move puzzle, but these have to be different from each other because that's the same as that, and these two are on a thermo. So those have to be different from each other. These have to be different from each other in the column. These have to be different from each other in the box. So if that's an eight, that's a nine, and that's a seven. If this is an eight, that's a nine, and that's a seven, but this could be eight, they'd both be sevens, that would be a nine. Now what is that telling me, if anything at all? Oh, this puzzle's going to have a real tipping point. If I can just get through this bit, it's going to get a lot easier. <laughs> That's a prediction that uh, may not come to fruition anyway. I'm losing my mind here. They both see a four. I haven't mar marked that before. That sees a four as well. So that's one, two or three. So four in this row is in one of those three places. Now, if that was a four, we get nines there, both sides of it. That nine, by this th triumvirate rule, forces a seven here. Um, but these, that could still be a six. Four was in one of those cells. Maybe if that's a four, you get two fives here. Does it do anything else? It doesn't feel like it does anything else. If that's a four, this has to be a six then. I don't know what that does, except, well, I do it. No, I was gonna say it makes this orange, but that's not necessarily true. If that was a six, this could be a seven. Eight, nine. 
Oh, okay, this triumvirate, they don't see anything. It's, it's not a knight's move puzzle. This is not any use. It's so annoying. Everything feels like it ought to be useful, and yet it's not being... Ah! Oh. These are yoked together by a white dot. No, it doesn't matter. This is seven or eight. Right, if it's seven, these have to be a one-two pair. What about that? Nothing. Nothing interesting about that at all. If it's not... Okay, well, one of these two is seven. So in one of these pairs, there is a one-two pair. If that's a 1-2 pair, because of this being a 7, that's a 3. This is 8. This is 9. That has to be 6. And that works on the 1-2 pair. We get 1... I mean, it, a lot gets done. So, if this is 7, I think we're going to find out what the white dot represents. If this is 7, that's 8. This is a 1-2 pair, so that's 3. This is 9. 6 is here. Now, I'm not sure where I'm getting that from now. That might be absolute bobbins. If this is 7, you've got a 1-2 pair here. That's 8. Yeah, we've still got 6, 7 and 9 to place in the row. So my conclusions are not correct that is not thorough logic that's very annoying One, two, oh i can't see what the next step is i mean i've been struggling for the next step throughout this whole puzzle let's uncolor those fives at least just to do something oops um One of these is blue and one is orange. And one is six. Well, I wish that would help. Just don't think it does. So again, let's think about this being seven, which seems the less likely version. These become eights. You've got a one, two pair there. You must have a one in one of those cells in that case. I don't know, I don't know. This being seven feels the least likely possibility in this puzzle at the moment to me from the from the ones I've got marked, but I can't quite see why it is the case. I am gonna plug away at this one though, I can tell you, it's intriguing. Um Yeah, I definitely want more. Okay, here's another thought I haven't had before. There's a blue digit on this pair, and it's not four, because that would have to be with a nine. So it's the third one of one, two, three in the box. Does that get anything done? I mean, it says that these are not from one, two, three. But I'm not, ooh. No, they could, I mean, I was going to say there must be a high digit here, but no, it could be a 4-5 pair. But definitely the third 1-2-3 digit in this box is in that pair. Oh, if I could say that that wasn't a three, then one of these would be a three. 
I was wondering if that was going to stop the difference on the white dot being a six. I don't think it does. Ah! Stuck again. Oh, this can't be a four because its neighbours see each other. That's the sort of thing that's just poor pencil marking. Um... You can probably tell I'm getting very frustrated right about now. That is definitely the case now. I'm suspicious about this white dot because I've done nothing with it. Now, what about this one? Yeah, okay, again. This has a blue number on it that is one, two, or three because it's not four. So does this. Again, that's another virtual triple of one, two, threes. And these are things I haven't seen before. That means this is not a one, two, or three. That means one of these two in this column is. Do I have to colour the one, two, threes? Might be interesting if I did, but I don't, I don't know how far it gets. I'm going to try it. That's, I don't know where to start. This is a weird one, I think. Um, oh, just thought. Maybe I can say this isn't a seven. No, I can't. I was going to say because these must be one, two, and three. That's not the case, though. Ah, maybe I can say this isn't a three because this triumvirate are all different. Is that? If that was a three, these would both be eights. And that would have to be a nine. And that would leave this being impossible. Okay, so that's not a three. There's something concluded for the first time in ages. Now if the difference on the white dot was 5, these would have to be 7, 2, 7. That would become a 7. That would become a 1. That would be a 2. It doesn't do anything. I knew I'd be saying that in a moment. I was about to colour the one, two, threes, but I don't know how any how enough of them see each other to make it a worthwhile exercise. I just don't know. Okay. Did I say no? I didn't say there has to be a one, two, three on that pair. There have to be a one, two, three on that one and that one and this one. They just don't see each other enough to colour the one, two, threes and make it useful. I mean, you're always making judgments in these puzzles on what would be useful to colour, and this is not it. What about this? This can't be high, surely. If this was high, these would both be low. I've looked at this before. That would be high, that would be low, that would be high. We'd have high digits here and here. It seems like it works annoyingly. I think this would have to be a 4-5 pair if that occurred. Then you'd get fives in those positions. I don't think they're fives do a lot more at this point, frustratingly. Now, okay, can this be low? I haven't looked at that. If that's low, that's also low. It can't, and it's not a five. That is high. And this has been sitting there for ages. This thermo, I even thought it was important, and yet I haven't made that conclusion. I'm making it now. Let's see if it helps. So this cannot be low because all those would be low by thermo rules and you'd need an extra low one in that pair. So that is high. That is the fourth high in its row. 
So that becomes low. Now, one of these two is a four. Is that interesting? No, sir. One of these four is a six. It can't be here. That's higher than another high digit. Um, but it could be here if it was connected to two ones. Ooh, it gets interesting though. Um, now in this column, there's a high digit there, there's a high digit on that pair, there's a high digit there, and there's a high digit on that pair. This one ends up being low. This is a high-low pair. And they've got a different separation. I don't think you can put four on this pair, can you? So the other one, two, three is on this pair. You can't put four on because you can't put nine on. So four is in this pair with a five. That is four or five. Uh, it doesn't help, does it? Does it? Well, four is in one of these cells. Now I know this is low, but I don't know that this one isn't. If it's not a five, it, well, it's either a four or a five. If the five is in this cell, no, that's not right. Well, all I can say is one of these is one of these two is a four, which is a different conclusion, unfortunately. Um, Yes, now, hang on, if the difference was going to be 6 on the white dot, these were going to be a 4, 5, 6 triple. And they can be still, and that's quite easy, so maybe the difference is 6. If the difference was going to be 5, what would the odd other digits be then? They would be, they would include a 5, obviously. Oh, they would be 4, 5, 9, wouldn't they? These, yes, these three digits are the ones... I think, I think this may be determining that the white dot is a six after all. And this may be the tipping point I need, if that's right. Or oh, 45 minutes in. I hope this is right. Let me think about this a tiny bit more. If the difference was five, well, we know one, two, and three are on these white dots. Then the numbers accompanying them would be six, seven, eight. And that cannot be the case because of the digits that can go in this cell. The difference on the white dot is six. <sighs> so, that is vital. I mean, it may not let me fill anything in, but the difference on the white dot is six. Now, that does mean that this group of cells is four, five, six. So that is a six. It means that this group of cells is four, five, six. So that's a four, six pair. Um, where else have we got three dots in a row? In the top row, the ones not on the dots are four, five, and six. So that's a four. Anywhere else? Any more for any more? The white dot difference is six. I'm really rather surprised. I think I gave it as my expectation earlier that it would not be. And there we go. Now, this is 7, 8, or 9 to make that work. This is 7, 8, or 9. In fact, anything on a white dot is 1, 2, 3, or 7, 8, 9, isn't it? One of those is a 3. So, either that or that is the 9. Yeah, I, that's obvious. No use to me there. Um, six is the white dot difference. How is this helping? This is not got a nine on. So again, from one, two, seven, and eight. Four in this box is now in these cells, but not necess ah, okay, not necessarily with five because five could be there. But four is seeing that cell, which now cannot be a four, and that cracks the last of the jellyfish. We get four there, we get fives in those cells. That's not a five. These now don't have a five in. The five in the row is here. That's not a five. 
and we're still left with some fives to sort out but in a much more ordinary sudoku style so i can get rid of the jellyfish coloring there we go now these are from well they can't include a three because they don't have a nine so they're from one two seven and eight as well white dots are always from one two three seven eight nine so all of those are ah oh, that's part of a one two seven eight quad in the row that in the column that's a three this is not a three um well, this can't be, oh, it could be a six. Oh, I thought this tipping point would get everything done. These are from one, two, three, seven, eight, nine. So that's a quad in the column, and this is a six. Oh, yeah, it is one there, and this is high. So let's color those. This might matter blue there now is that gonna act oh one there so this is a two eight pair that's not a two this isn't an eight now this is a nine with a three there the nine oh it doesn't i thought that was going to resolve how these work that's a seven eight pair no it doesn't that's a nine by sudoku that's on a dot with a three I knew that couldn't be a three. Um, this can't be six, and that's part of a seven, eight pair. This is a two, two. Ah, it can't be a two. Oh no, don't go wrong now. You nasty, nasty puzzle. What have I done wrong here? Let's hope it's just a moment ago when I said that was a nine. What did I do before that? Something down there. Why did I say that had to be a nine? I said this had to be a nine three pair because three by Sudoku and the six difference. That can't be a seven by German Whispers. This is not right, is it? Because I'm going to end up with a two here. And that's a disaster. Oh. Yeah, no, but this, this felt, it all felt so good. One there. Seven, four, six here. But this has to be high. Did that have to be a six? I thought it did in this column. Yeah, it can't be there. It can't be on the white dots. Oh man, what's gone? Okay, let's go back to the point where I identified that six was the white dot number. All the way back to that. Let's see if I did something wrong on the jellyfish. Please. Right, it was here. Let's just see if this was right. Now, I figured that if these had a difference of five, because they're taking one, two, three, they would also be taking six, seven, eight, and that would be impossible. That's right. So that's a six. Down there, we've got a six, four pair. Only place for four. Yes, four, can ne four, five, and six can never be on white dots. And that's what I started doing next. Is that right here? The white dot. Yeah, I think that is right. And that's got to be right at the bottom of the column as well. If you can't put nine on a white dot, it must be from one, two, seven, eight. Then I said that four in this box had to be here. And that's right. Now, and that meant that I put four 
here. Now, my conclusion for that, yes, there's a 4 there and a 4 there. If 4 is in one of those, 4 has to be there. That sorts out the remaining 5s. How can this be wrong? I don't understand at all. Now, maybe filling those in is one. No, that has to be right. There's no 9 on those either. One, two, seven, eight, and you get a three here, and this is where it starts to go very pear-shaped, isn't it? Or oh, is it now? Oh, it's because of what I did in column eight, which was a bit weird. I found a one, two, three, seven, eight, nine, sextuple. But that's right. In column eight, I could have said this straight away. Six can only go here. That's right. Six must be next to one on a whisper. One is next to seven, specifically, on a white dot. Oh. But, I mean, the same problem is going to occur, that two needs to be there, and two also needs to be there in the box. And how do you square that circle? How can I possibly reconcile that? What on earth have I done wrong in this puzzle to get to this point? I cannot see it. I mean, something must be wrong here. <sighs> Maybe if I come at it from a different angle from this point, I'll find what's gone wrong, but that's an awfully dangerous way to go. One there, so none of these can be ones. Um, well, this has to be, it can't be six, so it's from seven, eight, nine. I mean, this is hardly a different angle, but these are from one, two, three, six. And that's interesting. That means seven, eight, nine are all on this thermo so we know how they dispose themselves in that case that's an eight this is a seven now seven is on or is next to a one two pair that becomes a three this now has to be nine the six i was going to say that has to be a six that's not true it's six or seven i mean this is a very hopeless way of doing the puzzle there's no three or nine on that in fact there's no one on it so there's no seven that's a two eight pair this is a 1-7 pair. That's a 2-8 pair. There's no 2 there. And there's no 8 in those cells. That's a 6. That sorts out 4 and 6. That makes this a 7. This is a 4 by Sudoku. And that's clashing with a 4. And the whole thing's fallen apart. I don't know, this is so frustrating. I mean, maybe right back at the beginning I've made a false claim. What shall we do? Shall we restart the puzzle? Try again knowing what we know now? Give that a go? It's madness in a way, but I'm tempted. Let's try it. Let's try it. It's madness, but... We start, we start with the jellyfish on fives, which is what I thought was the only places five could go in rows one. Yeah, we've worked out five. Is this, okay, no, no, let's take it back to the white dot theory. 
I reckoned that the white dot, because of this, has to have a difference of five, six, seven, or eight. Because there are three white dots in a box, it cannot be eight or seven. Those are valid. The white dot is worth a difference of five or six. That being the case, five can never be on a white dot. That's valid. Okay, so five is in one of those cells in row one. One of those cells in row four. One of those in row seven. And one of those in row nine. They are possible positions for five. In those boxes. Now, in yeah, maybe I, I made a false conclusion after that. So we were looking at a few rows and columns. Look at this column. The only place for five in this column is in one of those two. So that one is not a five. Any other rows or columns standing up to be counted like that? Hmm. See, that's annoying. I can't really remember what I did next. Um, five in this column is in one of those two. But I did reach a conclusion that it had to be in those cells somehow. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess the five in this column is in one of those two places. So none of these can be a five. And that means in this box... Five has to be in one of those two cells. Now that only leaves these three cells in this row. Now if I can assume, yeah, five can't be there because of the swordfish. It can't be here because of the white dots. So it's the same here. It's in one of those boxes in each case. No, hang on. What do, what do I mean? I mean that the five in row six is in one of those cells. The five in row eight is in one of those cells. Oh, I used that to determine that there was a five in one of those two. But there could be fives in those places or those places. Now, that's an interesting early mistake. Now, then the next big deal. Well, I linked all these together, didn't I? I'm going to do it again. We're just going to repeat the whole blinking thing. Five and six must create um, high low on each green line and each white dot. They must create a pair on all of those. So we've got those. Now, these can't all be the one polarity because there's another dot in the box that needs a high and low on. So this one must be high. So green is high, is orange. Red is low, is blue. Hang on, that's, yes, that's because of the polarity marking. Now, this can't be orange as well, and it's also not five, so that's blue, that's low. This it's touching is high. Then I looked at this digit, which can't be a five. This was, this was something I didn't do quickly, but I got there in the end. And I don't think it can be low because then you'd have four low digits in the box. So that's high. Now we've got four highs in the row. Also, we know that this is not six, seven or eight. Uh, sorry, we know it is six, seven or eight. It can't be nine because there's a higher digit on the thermo. And I think that we know these two can't be a four because they see a four. These can't have a four on because they see a nine. And therefore, the four in the box is in one of these two cells with five. And if the difference of the white dot was five, I'm still going to allege that these cells would be a 1, 6, a 2, 7, and a 3, 8, and there'd be nowhere in the box for a 9. So the difference is 6. That is how we decide that. Isn't that interesting? We could have done that in five minutes, and it took 
it took me about 40. So the difference on the white dot is 6. And therefore, this is a 1, 2, 7, 8 group of cells. That is a 6. Now we've got 3, 4 and 5 to place in the column. That one can't be a 5 by the jellyfish. Now, where we can never have 4, 5 or 6 on the white dots. So that's a 4, 5 pair in the top row. This is a 4, 5, 6 triple in box 7. Five and six need to be in these cells. That can't be a four by just ordinary Sudoku in the, the given digit. Um, yeah, now my conclusion that there needed to be a five here, maybe that was the big problem. That's re it's really weird if that was the problem, but it could be, couldn't it? This is how bad I am at jellyfishes. I don't know what they mean. That's really painful. Anyway, these can't all be blue because that's a blue. So this has to be orange at least. That's on a dot, so that's blue. Now if that was blue, that would be five blues. So that's orange, that's blue. And that does this line in terms of alternation. We can mark all the oranges and blues on it. Um, Yeah, interesting. It's going to come down to me assuming that, n believing, knowing that there was a five on those cells, and there probably wasn't. Interesting. Okay, I just need to be cautious now. This is six, seven, or eight. That's seven, eight, or nine. Thermo rules are useful in this. Now, it can't be six, because that's not on a white dot. So that's seven or eight. This is one or two. That's seven or eight, the same. Um... These are from 789. That's still definitely true given the cells they see. This is low. That's high. Um, that has to be 1, 2, or 3 to be on the white dot. So does that. And that because it sees a pair that's, well, it, it's neighboring a pair that see each other. So they're from 7, 8, 9 in the row. These are from 1, 2, 3. That's not really helping. That's from 7, 8, 9. This is on a white dot. It's from 1, 2, 3. I'm going to keep doing that where I can. At least I may have found what my, what my error in belief was. And it's, it's quite... Oh, does that matter? Sorry, Simon. I cannot deal with you now. Um... don't know what this is. Right, come on, Mark, come on. Four, five, and six. So these are from one, two, three, seven, eight, nine. Now, where can I find... Now, it was column eight, wasn't it? I found a big old... But was that based on this? Well, that has to be one, two, or three, because there's a four in the box. So where's six in this column? It's not on a white dot. It's got to be here. Yes. Okay, that's still true. 617 we get out of that. Now, let's use this the other way. That is now 8 or 9 in the box. That's also 8 or 9. That is a pair. Where is 6 in the row? I don't know. And I've got far less far with the purples than I had before. How did I think I knew that that had to be purple before. I can't remember. That's really embarrassing, isn't it? Anyway, this is not orange, and I, it's not five, because five is in one of the purples in this column. So that's blue, and that's blue. That's all the blues. This can be five or can't be? 
And I don't know. I don't know whether it can or can't be. Bother. Two in this box is in one of those two cells. Let's just say that for now. That stops this being a two. I've got one three on white dots with a seven nine pair up there. This is a two eight pair. This is a one seven pair at the bottom. That is not a one. In this column, that's become a nine. That sorts out those one three seven nine businesses. This is two eight three. The pair on the white dot is a two eight pair. That's a three. This has to be eight or nine by German whisper rules. That's become a five, which is sorting out some of my jellyfishage. Right, that's reduced the jellyfish um, to a swordfish. <laughs> if I've got my terminology right, and who knows. One, two, or four there. Come on. Three, five, two, eight pair that has made that a nine. This is a six which is definitely not a five. Now that, this is actually a two five pair. That's an eight. Oh, this is also doable. Two five pair, not assuming that has to be the five this time. Indeed, I think this is where we're gonna get to, are we? What's this pair? It's not three nine and it's not one seven. That's two eight. And there we go, three there, Five there. This is a two. It's not a five. There was my fundamental error, I think. Five is now in one of these cells in this row. And therefore not here. That hasn't sorted out the whole jellyfish. Which is fair enough. Fair enough. Two eight pair there makes that a nine. Not a two here. Um... Nine, two, eight. We need a six in one of those cells by Sudoku. This is a, I don't know, it's not a four, it's a one or a three. Come on, I'm sure there's a lot. Oh, that's a 1-2 pair, sitting on white dots with a 7-8 pair, obviously. Uh, that can't be a 3, because it must be touching a 7 on the line. And it can't be a 1, because of the row. That's a 2. This is a 1. That's a 2. They're shimmying up with 8s. That's a 9. I could have done that from that dot a long time ago. This is not 9 or 8. That's a 7. That makes this a 1. Nine, three, five. This is six or seven, and that is four, six or seven. These can't have a one, seven, two or eight on. That's a three, nine pair. That's been obvious for ages to you. That's an eight now. This is one or two because it can't be three. Four is on this lot on this thermo and is the higher digit. That's one or two, but it sees a one. Oh, th Look, and I keep finding a white dot when I find the other side of it. I mean, this is just classic Mark business, finding the hard way to do everything. And that has been the absolute theme of today's dreadful outing. So maybe I was as hungover as I feared I would be. That's become a one by Sudoku, 39281. That's a 6-4 pair now. That's a five. That's a four. That's going to finally sort out the jellyfish with fives there. Let's get rid of purple colouring. Let's get rid of pencil marked fives that aren't necessary there. Now, there is a five in one of these cells and in one of those cells. Ah, OK, well, at least it works. I literally feel quite good about this now. No, I don't because now I've had another crash and burn. That's unbelievable. How could this happen now? How could this happen now? How is this four clashing with a four? Oh, man, I'm not on four today. I 
F, four there, six there. That is right. This has to be a seven on the line. I'm going to cry this time. Look, I've got two fours there as well. That doesn't bode well. Maybe that's meant to be a four, but... Oh, did that... Maybe that didn't have to be blue. Let's go back to that bit. Well, it's a long time ago that I made that cell blue. And why... It's a long time ago, isn't it? It's dreadful, this. What an outing. Don't cry for me, Sudoku watcher. There. And I went there and said, that has to be blue. Why on earth did I think that had to be blue? Did I think this couldn't be a 789 triple? It's just another hideous error, isn't it? Quicker to spot this one, maybe, but let's not assume that that has to be blue. Let us carry on and see if we can find all the same stuff all over again. Crying as we do it. That can't be a seven. That can't be a one. Seven, eight, nine. There is an orange there. It's so weird that I can keep going wrong in this sort of puzzle. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I'll find the white dots as I go this time. That can't be a one. Let's try and do that. We've got an eight, nine pair. That is two or three. That doesn't rule anything out on the whisper. This can't be one. Um, let's keep trying. That can't be one. So this is seven, eight or nine. It can't be six now. feel so incompetent. This is a 2-8 pair because of the 1 and the 9 in the row. Okay, that sorts these out. 9 and 3, that can't be 7. That is now an 8. 2 is here. <sighs> That's blue. Um, this is 3, 4 or 5. Oh, two, we've got a 2-8 pair, so that's 3. That's 9. This isn't 9, so that's not 3. Three, two, eight, one, nine. Look, this is now four, five, six, or seven. Well, it can't be seven by um, by the rules. Honestly, the incompetence—it's just dreadful, isn't it? I know. Oh, look, I've got a two there, so that's a three with a nine on the dot. This is a 1 with a 7 on the dot. This is a 2-8 pair. That's a 1-7 pair. This is not got a 1 or a 7 on it, or a 9, so it's a 2-8 pair as well. That makes this 3-5. Uh, no, that's a whisper, so it's... No, it's got to be 9 by Sudoku. This is 6. <sighs> Same conclusions. That's not a 5. Um, right, I can still remove the purple from those and the corner marks and the five possibility out of that one. This has become a five. Nine, one, five, two, eight, three, four, six, and seven to place in the row. That's become a four. Okay, we're colouring now. Nine one five two eight three. That's no good. Four seven eight three nine. This is low one or two. Ah, you don't know. You don't know how much I hate myself today. Nine three five. Come on, let's just keep flogging away at this puzzle, which has not been this hard. I've just made a right ricket of it from the word go. Um, but perseverance is today's lesson. There is a six in one of those cells. Don't know which one. Don't want to presume this time. Swordfish, is that? I hate using the swordfish because I'm so bad at it. 
that's one or two, it can't be a four. So this is four, seven or eight, it can't be a six because I just said six has to be in one of those. So no, I was gonna say, oh, those don't have one or two on, so they're a three, nine pair. That stops this being a nut. Oh, what's happened there? Sorry. I must have hit the numlock button, went to the walk in the mist puzzle for, from Simon. Um, this, which I check occasionally to see how many people have solved it, that's not a nine, that's not a three. This isn't a three or a nine either. That's a one, two, seven, eight quad in the top row. Now, this can't be a three because it touches a seven and because there's a three here. Here I go again, ignoring the white dots, which are so helpful. Ooh, three nine pair, three nine pair, must be a three nine pair there. This is eight. So this is seven. That's on a white dot with a one. That makes this two. That's on a white dot with an eight. That's a one. This could be not eight. That's also not eight. We've got four, seven, six left to place in the row. This is a two. That fixes eight and two over here. That stops this being an eight. It can't be a seven on the whisper. That's a nine with a three there. This is five or six. This surely has to be orange, but no. Well, I believe it can't be a five on the jellyfish, but I'd rather just wait before making that sort of conclusion because it's the sort of thing that's led me into Absolute numpty land. And that's a one, that's a seven, eight and two there. That fixes eight and two here. In fact, this is now a two eight pair. And now we know surely that five in the bottom row has to be there. So that's done. Now I am going to get rid of purple in those cells and the corner marks. And now this time I can get rid of purple there. This time I'm down to a five X wing up here because I'm so bad at this. Oh, must not swear. Right, four, six pair there. This is now a two, seven pair. Well, the, the uh, thermo will tell us, oops, which way round they go. Seven, two, one. Not a seven here. That's a four or six pair. That's a seven. This is six. One, four, five, triple here. Obviously that's a one, given what it touches here. That has become a four, six, seven. And I absolutely jinx this by expressing my relief of last time that I was about to finish it. And although I believe that this time, I'm not gonna say it, unless that counts as having just said it. One, seven, this is a six, five pair. Four, six. This was a six, seven, eight, nine massive thermo. Um, this is a big digit. Six or nine. Don't know what. Do I know what this is? One, nine, eight, seven, two, four, five. This is three or six. Is it? By Sudoku, that's three or six. Well, six is too close to both of those numbers. So it's three, eight, two, three, nine. Eight, two, one, seven, six there, nine, five, four, five, six, four, four, five, five, six, three, nine. And hopefully this finishes the puzzle. Now, how, how can that have been solved two or three times? I think that refers to the number of times I have pressed restart. See, it's Sven. I'm going to tell, tell you this. It's not showing the number of times this has been solved because I only loaded this into the software and then started solving it. It's referring to the number of times it's been started, which is a bit different. Interesting, though. Um, and there we go. I mean, that is just fascinating. Um, so I'm not, I'm not going to colour in the rest of the grid. What I'm going to do is uncolour the rest of the grid instead. I'm so sorry. That was a, just a, a horlicks of a video.
from Helio Pollux, the setter. I really apologize to Helio Pollux. It's a much nicer puzzle than I made it look. It's very clever. The old jellyfish works beautifully, but it leads idiots like me into false assumptions about fives in those areas. And then I do think I know what I did wrong next. I just assumed that this thermo, I thought I'd done some work in the box to make that definitely low. No, that I even I thought was low, ridiculous. Ah, oh, it's very clever. I mean, it's, it's not as difficult as I made it look. I know that, oh, sorry, the, the solving time, I don't even know because I've, I was well over 45 minutes first go round and then another 24, so. Um, I hope that even the bot records my so solving time at about an hour and 15, which would be fair. But you guys will do it in much shorter time. Anyway, thank you, Sam, for making, making that recommendation, even though um, it's left me feeling a bit sad about my own abilities. But I'm delighted to have got through the puzzle. And ha! Ah, let's hope we're back with something a bit quicker tomorrow. And uh, I'll see you then. Bye for now.